this this course optimal control course is divided into two parts first part is the static optimization problem which we have discussed extensively last few lectures and next part is the dynamic optimization problems so we will briefly tell what we have covered in static optimization problems first we have defined or just we have with an example we explain what we mean by the optimization problems design then we have established suppose we have a function objective function which is a multi variable function then how to get the necessary and sufficient condition for that objective function which is unconstrained optimization problem let us say then in order to find out the sufficient condition we need a some background of what is called positive definite matrix negative definite matrix positive semi definite matrix and negative definite semi definite matrix we have tested this matrix whether it is a positive definite or negative definite matrix by using sylvester matrix criteria then we have solved this problem optimization problem which is unconstrained optimization problem by solving some numerical methods newton raphson newton method newton raphson method then constraint then your what is called conjugate gradient method gradient method and other methods we have discussed extensively after that we have seen that what is the difference between the unconstrained optimization problem and constrained optimization problem then we using the concept of lagrangian lagrangian multiplier we converted the constrained optimization problem into unconstrained optimization problem and one can solve this problem by what is called kkt condition we established the kkt necessary and sufficient condition simultaneously after that we have solved the problem of what is called that is so linear programming problem by using the numerical method that is called simplex method we have used it and then after solving the simplex simplex method so the optimization problem whether it is a constraint or unconstrained optimization problem we can solve by linear programming method then we have concept we have given the concept of what is called dual and primer problems one can solve the dual problem from primary problem solution and vice versa that we have seen it next we have given the concept of what is called convex set then then is the what is called quadratic optimization problem then what is called quadratically constant quadratic optimization problems that problems we have discussed it and the solution of this problem one can solve by numerically or by using once you obtain the necessary condition of this one then you can solve by using what is called our lp method linear programming methods then finally we have discussed briefly the outline of what is multi objective optimization problems okay and in multi objective optimization problem we cannot get it optimal solution of this problem that we got it pair to optimal solution okay so this is the first part of the work course that is static optimization problems next part of the our course is the dynamic optimization problems and our constraint everything objective function is there our constraint is maybe a dynamic in nature the equation so our next topics is our dynamic optimization so first we discuss first we will discuss the basic concept of what is function and what is function null so let us call concept between function and functional this as we know the function is nothing but a mapping of one domain to another domain For any element in some set when you will map this any element of this set to another set 
another possible set it is called the mapping from one domain to another domain and it is nothing but a for an example you can say function it is a mapping from it is it is a mapping in assign each element of some set to a unique element a possible different set. Suppose, this is the set some set which elements are the x any point in this element are x that is mapped to a another set possible another set let us call y agree small y this is the corresponding this let us call this point is mapped to this point. So, it is nothing but mapping. In other words, with an example, if you can know that if you have a function f of x, y is equal to f of x, which is a function of 2 x square plus 7, agree, then this any value let us call in this sense is mapped to other set value of y here. So, this x is a independent, independent, independent variable and y is a dependent variable. So, the value of y depends on the x this. So, this is function, function is nothing but a mapping from one each element of a set to another set with a unique element you can the ne next is function null so it is an important cons concept of calculus of variations agree okay? so this is function null is nothing but a function of a function in other words you can say it is a function of a of other function. Let us take one, one example, functional is nothing but a function of a function, agree? Example, suppose this integration t 0 to t f and v of t d t. Let us call v of t is the velocity of a vehicle and we want we have started the vehicle at time t is equal to 0 and completed the its motion of at time, time t is equal to t f. Now, we want to this integration means this is the velocity of a vehicle, velocity of a vehicle and this integration means how much path is traversed by the vehicle from the time t is equal to 0 to t is equal to t f, t is 0 is the initial time and t f is the final time. So, this indicates the path traversed by the vehicle during the period, during the time period this means. So, this is, is a, you see v is a function of time and j is a function of v. So, it is a function of a functional again. So, let us see that <coughs> and if you see in general in general we can write let us call we have a function j 
is a function of time and t, which is nothing but a just how it is t f of t, then it is a v x of t of t d t. <coughs> okay. This is the functional, j is a functional, is a function of a function, then this is the our functional. Okay. So, <coughs> what do you mean by the next question, how to find out the increment of the functional, increment of the functional. Functional. By definition, increment functional that is called del j is equal to del x plus delta x t of t minus the functional value when x is part of by delta I, x plus delta x and difference of these two functional value is called the increment of the functional. An increment of function, the difference of two function value at what is called x is equal to when x is part of x plus delta x t and then originally is x of t of t this functional incremental functional. Let us see if you just do the Taylor series expansion of this one because delta x is very close to the x of t. Okay. You can think of it this equation 1, the equation 1 you can think of it like this way. Suppose this is t, this is our j of, so this is our a and this is b. and this is the x star of t, I will explain what is x star of t and this is x a which is equal to x of t is equal to x star of t plus delta x of t and this point is let us call b and this point is a. So, <coughs> this is time t and we have to this point a is moved from A to B along the trajectory of X star and X star is the uh, um, what is called optimal trajectory. That means, to reach from the point A to B, what is the optimum path of this one traverse that is if you move along the X star. And around the X star, I have considered which is not a optimal path, but suboptimal path around the path around a or a neighborhood of x, I have considered another path that is x star of t delta f of x. But this is not the optimal path, it is a suboptimal path. So, our problem is let us call j is this one. So, if you see this one, <coughs> then I can write it that that one what is called j if you do the Taylor series expansion of that one is a function of x and t Taylor series expansion expansion so delta j i can write it is del j along the trajectory of this one del j x of t of t plus I am writing from this equation plus del j and differentiation of x of t del x t and this x t is equal to x star of t into delta x t and I am considering this is a single variable case this agree and <coughs> plus then half 
del square j del x square of t x star of t at and delta x of t whole square plus higher terms minus of that term minus j x star of t of t. Now, this this and this cancel. So, we have considered if object what is this one function is a function of x t let us call a function. So, incremental functional value j l is j nothing but a that along along x star near about x star there is another trajectory is x plus delta x t. So, what is the incremental function value of this one? In other words, you can say if the function value of the functional, the function value is x which is a function of x t of t. If you put up x t by delta x, then function value is this, this one. What is the difference of between two functional values is called incremental transformation, where the perturbation around x t is very small. Then Taylor series expansion, if you do it, it is like this way. And we, we assume that after the what is called third order terms, the after second order terms, we are neglecting that contribution in the expression, because the delta e x is very small. So, if you do this one, I can write delta x, delta g is nearly equal to this one is delta j of this delta x t, x t is equal to x star of t into delta x t plus delta square dot of this delta x square of t and half is there, then x of t x star of t delta x of t whole square and we have neglected neglecting higher terms higher higher order derivatives order derivatives if you see in the example though i have shown you it is an example it is in general we are a point is there we have to move the b point along the trajectory x star is the optimal trajectory for which the functional value of this one is minimum. Then I am telling that around this path and very neighborhood of this x star that is optimal path there is another path is there. Then what is the functional value of this one? This one. Then difference of this functional will optimal path and sub optimal path difference of this one optimal trajectory and suboptimal trajectory, what is the difference of the functional value that is coming like this way, while we have neglected the higher order derivatives terms. Okay. So, our condition is if you recollect our the basic necessary condition for single variable case is nothing but a first derivative of this one must be 0. So, this I mean just for simplicity I am just using delta j is the this part and delta j square is for this part. So, this this is called the first variation, first variation of functional and this is called second variation. of functional and these two variation is important to take a conclusion whether the functional is a minimum or maximum. So, necessary condition a functional will be extimum that delta j must be 0. So, our necessary condition or I first we write it where is delta j, delta j is nothing but a delta j capital J delta x of t x of t 
is equal to x star of t delta x of t and delta square j. This is the second variation of the functionality is a delta square j delta x square of t is x of t is equal to x star of t delta x of t whole square. Okay. So, keeping in this mind, we know the necessary condition. The necessary condition for this one is your delta j must be equal to 0. So, our necessary condition is delta j is the this is the our necessary condition. Necessary condition for the functional to be extimum for the functional to be extimum mean either minimum or maximum then delta square j should be if it is greater than 0 this implies the functional is value is obtained is minimum or sorry a minimum value functional and del square j is less than 0 new means negative then this is condition for minimum minimum value of the functional and this is greater than implies the maximum value of the functional okay so let us take an example and see that how first we will see this is the just establish the necessary condition for single variable case more details will go if it is a multi variable case j x will is a variable of n variables are there x1 x2 x3 dot dot xn and the functional is is a function of x t we have shown it may be in general is a function of what you call x t and x dot t comma t or second derivatives also there is a may be functional functional may be function of x x x dot x double dot t and so on. <coughs> so, let us see a simple example that how to obtain the functional that I just mentioned it just now suppose we have a point A and point B and this point is a time t is this one that here is your x of t in these directions that initially the point A has a coordinates x of t 0 of t 0 and this is t 0 and here is your t f and this coordinates is equal to this coordinate is x t f comma t f is the coordinate of this point and this coordinate is your x t 0 t 0 and in short this is equal to x of 0 and t 0 x of 0 and t 0 and that is in short you can write x of x t f x f you can write it if you like it x f and t f. So, our problem is that what is the what is the the length of this arc optimum length of this arc a to b a to b I have to move what is the optimum length of this arc while while we move from a to b that is that means. <coughs> so, in order to that let us call this is the optimal path of this one okay, how to find out. So, let us take one point he is here this is delta x d x you can say it is a d x and in time d t it is in time d t it is 
that uh, position of the x is changed d x and this length is d l, this arc length is d l. So, we can write it this, <coughs> our problem is a length of the arc connecting two points A and B, whose coordinates are x of t 0 and b t f x of t f in the x t plane, x t plane. Find the length, length of the arc connecting the point this and this in x y plane. So, let us formulate in mathematical form, let us call this, you see we can write it this one is a small element in d t second, this distance covered is d x. Okay. So, I can write it, this is almost is 90 degree, this for so far we consider the small incremental time, what is the change in x. So, I can write it d l square is equal to d x square plus d t square, this one. So, from this equation, one can write it that d l square is equal to, I am taking the common of d t square, d t is a small incremental time that square. So, if you take it here, this is 1 plus d x and d t whole square agree? and it is nothing but a 1 plus d x d t is nothing but a velocity or you can write it x dot of t this square than this d t square. So, what is d l? d l is the that small incremental the arc along the arc d l, this is I am writing d l is nothing but a square root of 1 plus x dot square of t and it is d t. So, what is the length when you when you move from time t 0 to t f, what is the arc length of this one? You have to integrate both side that d l you have to integrate from t 0 to t f. Okay. <coughs> is equal to integration t 0 to t f root over 1 plus x dot square t d t. And that length, this in length let us call is d f l, this is t 0 to t f root over 1 plus x dot square is this. Again, this is so I can write it that this is nothing but a function of you can write it function of if you write it this L is a function of you can write T 0 to T f V functional is a function of x dot of T of T d t this d t is there. Now, we are if you see at time t is equal to 0, what is the distance covered from a point to d? That means, what is the arc length of this one and this is nothing but a you express the arc length of the l which is defined by l is equal to this is nothing but it is a function of a functional. Agree? So, this is the basic any problem it is giving to this one you have to formulate into this form. Okay. So, that uh, once you get it this one, this optimal length of this one, uh, you say from A to B, you can find out by using what is called that our necessary and sufficient condition. Okay. Necessary condition and first, 
first you find out the incremental of the functional from there you find out the first variation of the functional assigned to 0 and second variation of the functional will give you the what is the what is the whether the this length of this will maximum or minimum of that one. So, <coughs> now let us take a specific problem to establish that in general that what is called the necessary and sufficient condition for this problems. So, our problem is now our problem is to find the optimal trajectory x star of t for which the functional j is a function of t comma t this will be t 0 to t f v which is a function of x x dot of t of t d t. Let us call we have a given the functional which is function of the integral t is function of x t x dot t and t. Okay? So, you have to find out the optimal trajectory x star which in turn you will get x dot star. You have to find out the optimal trajectory x star such that this functional is maximized or minimized or extimum. Okay? So, this is our problem statement. So, solution of this problem we made an assumption assumption that V of this has first and second derivative second partial derivatives with respect to all its all its argument as a first and derivative with respect to all its arguments agree and t 0 and t f is fixed fixed t f t f f is and they are the end points end points and t f t 0 and t f are fixed and the end points are fixed is a more specific case we are considering. This means that this means we have a that functional agree we have a functional and the functional value we have to integrate from t 0 to t f and it is nothing but a I told you I mentioned I told you you have to look for a optimal trajectory x t such that this functional value is optimized. So, let us call that optimal value optimal value of the function optimal trajectory of the function x t is like this way when we moved from a to b these two end points a to b and x star is the optimal trajectory for the functional for which the function value is extremum and near about this or neighborhood of this one there is another sub optimal trajectory x t plus delta x t agree. So, the x t and delta x t this one and this is I denoted by this is x a of t and x of t very close to very close to x star of t. So, the in this direction t and in this direction is your x of t. So, what is this coordinates at time t is equal to 0 that coordinates is x t 0 which we have written x of f and this coordinate is 
x t f of t which is denoted x f of t f that is the coordinate this is the coordinate of that one agree so what we can write it first step in order to solve this problem but still now i am considering x is a single variable but our ob functional is a function of x and x dot t and t in general it can be a function of x x dot x double dot and so on and not only this that x may be a multi variable function that means x may be a vector x1 x2 dot dot xn similarly x x dot is x1 dot x2 dot dot xn dot so in such situation that how to handle this one for the time being i am considering x is a scalar quantity scalar variable so step 1 x star of t optimal trajectory x a of t is the a trajectory which is very close to the optimal trajectory and it is a sub optimal trajectory for which the functional value is not optimal he is close to the x star of t and satisfies the following boundary conditions. What is the following boundary conditions? That means, this condition x I can write it x star of t 0 is equal to x 0. Agree? So, this boundary condition I can write it x a t 0 is nothing but a x star of t 0 is equal to x sub 0. You see this value along the, this value for this curve and for this curve is same. So, I have to a x of t 0 is same as x star of t 0 this. Another is x of t f is equal to x star of t f is equal to x f and these are the boundary condition. Not only this you can see x x delta x of t at time t is equal to t 0 that means any time t is equal to the, this is the delta x of this delta x of t okay. let us call t is equal to t 1 what is the in change in from optimal trajectory and sub optimal trajectory this is the change in value so at at this point both the function value sub optimal and optimal function value are same so their change in function value also will be zero similarly at t is equal to t 0 delta x of t t is equal to t f is equal to zero and these boundary conditions are satisfied that we have to satisfy that this condition that means we are considering a and b both are fixed point Agree? So, before we go to the second step, before we go to the second step, we have a one lemma we have to use it for solution of these problems. So, this just this lemma is like this way and proof of the lemma I will skip it time permits I will just do it <coughs> at the end of this lecture. Suppose lemma, this is the important lemma when we will establish the necessary and sufficient condition for a functional. Suppose that a function g t is continuous on the interval t 0 to t f. A function g t is continuous over the interval then 
then one can write it then T 0 to T f g t delta x t d t is equal to 0, then integrate the g t multiplied by delta x t, delta is the change in x value in x over the interval 0 to t is 0, if and only if necessary and sufficient condition g of t must be 0 over the interval anywhere over the interval g is 0 at every point, every point of the interval t 0 to t f. Agree? So, this is the our important lemma of this one. Now, we will use this lemma when we will establish the necessary and sufficient condition for the functional values. So, the proof if term permits at the end of this class I will do it otherwise next class. Step 2. So, what is the necessary and sufficient condition that we have to write it to find the trajectory to find a trajectory x of t connecting t 0 x 0 and t f x f between this t 0 x 0 this point and this point connecting the trajectory this one and this point along the along which j the functional value will be extremum x dot of t of t is extremum that is our problem. Find the trajectory x star of t, find the trajectory x star of t which is optimal, you have to find out a trajectory x of t connecting between the two which is extremum, that means we have to find out x star. So, our necessary condition, you see necessary condition to the functional to be optimized is del j is equal to 0, this is the necessary condition, but sufficient condition condition del square j is greater than 0, if delta del square j greater than 0 is minimum and del square j is less than 0 is maximum value maximum value of the functional of the functional okay. and uh, we have we have derived it you see this one earlier in our static optimization problem that what is the necessary condition and now for functional case or the single variable case we have also say del square g greater than 0 for minimum value of the functional. Okay. <coughs> so, let us see what we can get it from equation number of 1, but now our function is functional is a function of x and x dot. So, from equation 1 that is our starting with this one you see. So, this this is you call equation number 1, I am referring this equation, our problem statement is this equation. From equation 1, incremental, incremental functional value j is equal to j x star of t plus delta x t, x dot star of t plus delta x dot of t, but this minus j 
x star of t x dot star of t t. And if you do the Taylor series expansion of this one, what is x star of delta t? Just now we have seen this again. If it is optimal trajectory of this one, never of this one or very close to this optimal trajectory, there exists another path which is a suboptimal. Okay? That that is a, so. If you do the Taylor series expansion, this one, I will skip the detailed steps of this one. Then you will get it del v dot del x of t. This transpose put the value x star of x a x star of t around around x star I am doing the Taylor series expansion. So, x t is equal to x star t x dot is equal to x dot star of t into delta x of t plus del v dot del x dot of t whole transpose, because this is a row vector, a column vector, transpose is a row vector, then you multiply it by this is a column vector is a scalar quantity. So, that again you find out x star of t, x star of t x t, x dot of t is equal to x dot star of t into delta x dot of t, this one. Then second order part will be half, then find out del square second derivative of this one with respect to x x star of t, x dot of t is equal to x dot star of t into delta x of t whole square plus twice del square v dot del x of t del x dot of t. We have done these things several times in our static optimization problems. This one find these values x of t is equal to x star of t and x dot t is equal to x dot star of t and it is del x of t into del x dot of t this plus okay, plus another term del square v del square v dot of t del dot square of t to evaluate the value second derivative value of this one. This is what we have d, it is b is a scalar quantity, we are differentiating this with respect to x we will get a vector, again differentiation with respect to x we will get a matrix. So, this matrix and that matrix is a symmetric matrix. So, that x of t is equal to x star of t and x dot of t, x dot of t is equal to x dot star of t into delta x dot of t whole square, whole bracket, this is a whole bracket of this okay, of that, that, that one and then higher terms. This is the terms is left over incremental function. So, <coughs> and because what we will do it this one, you write this expression for j and then do it. What is the j expression? If you see the this expression is what? Integration of t 0 to t f, this expression integration of t 0 to t f v x of t x dot of t of t d t. Agree? Similarly, this one. So, if you do this one, I am now doing the what is called Taylor series expansion of that integrand part of this one. So, your whole thing if you look at this expression the whole thing you have a t 0 to t f agree and this curly bracket of this one and after that this curly bracket is ends and d t agree. 
So, if you see the j expression t 0 to t f v x dot d t and similarly, this expression is what t 0 to t f v x plus delta x of t plus x dot t plus delta x dot of t t this one into d t that one. So, this after writing this one that this Taylor series expansion we are doing because t 0 to t f t 0 to t f both cases it is common. So, I will get it this expression. Okay. So, our basic things here you see what is the necessary condition we will write it step let us call this equation what we are writing the equation number 2 the equation number 2 then step 3 first variation of the functional first variation of the functional. del j is equal to 0 and in your case del j is what? If you see this one t 0 to t f this is the del j t 0 to t f delta v dot del x of t whole transpose. So, from now onwards I will write it x t is equal to x star x dot is x dot is equal to x dot star by simply star that means, this star indicates x t you replace by x star x star of t x dot t you replace by x dot star of t into delta x of t plus del v dot del x dot of t whole transpose star means x t is replaced by x star t x dot t x dot t replaced by x dot t t at x dot of t this one and this must be equal to 0 that but this d t is there agree. So, this must be this is the first variation of the functional must be 0. So, this one can simplify this part by integration by in, in, integration by parts like this way. If you see this one our basic integration part by del u del u del v which we can write it u del v plus v del u integrate both sides integrate both side t 0 to t f del u del v is equal to u is constant now t 0 to t f del v plus v is constant integrate t 0 to t f del u. Agree? So, what is this part? This part is nothing but a del u d, d u v then limit is t 0 to t f. Okay. This part we can write it u v and integration that is limit is t 0 to t f this part and right hand side as it is right hand side as it is this thing u del u t 0 to t f del v plus this one that means this this terms are here right hand side. So, if you use this one here, this expression here, we can simplify further that one. Agree? And this simplification you see, I can write it that one, what is called from here to here, that is you can write it, this is integration of, this is you see, you are differentiating this with respect to x and then put the value of x t is equal to x star. So, this is a constant term agree? that is constant term you got it evaluated this one and del x dot I can write it this L del x dot I can write it d of d t into d of d t into x of 
I can write a d of d t into del x of t del of y of x t into that our d t is there. So, <coughs> differentiate of this with respect to del x of t means del x dot. In general, what we write it? Differentiation of x dot is equal to our d of d t x t. So, this is del x of del x dot is equal to d of d x t del x this one. So, if you consider this part now last part of this expression, then you can write it this is t 0 to t f del v del x dot of t whole transpose star agree. Then you can write it d of d t del x of t this d t. Now, you consider this is as you consider this is as a v, you consider this is as a v and this is you consider as a u. u. So, it is nothing but u this this cancel day u d v. So, u d v you see u d v u d v I can write it that u if you consider u d v this I can write it that del v dot del x dot of t whole transpose star into v means del x t agree and this values is from t 0 to t f. So, this is u v u v t 0 to t f I have written and that is minus if you take it this is minus v means del x, del x is the scalar quantity del x and integration of del u, integration of d u, d u integration is what? If you just this one integration t 0 to t f and you have to do the d u, d u is your del v dot del x dot agree. It does not matter if we multiply it by this and this differential and you have a d x that is your uh, u v agree. So, that will be a your del x del x of t. This here u is this, this one and your your v is what del v d v d v is nothing but a d v is del t del x this one you can write. Anyway, we will discuss this part next class more clearly. My, my aim is this one this term I can using this expression I can make it simpler form and then I can establish the del j 0 what is the condition for del j 0 to be become 0. So, using that lemma what we have discussed we can find out the necessary condition for this one. So, here I will stop it now and the lemma which we, is we discuss will also explain or prove the next class.